And so we've got Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One cry, baby! Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. Now, the Detroit Lions had a tough situation go on in free agency. They had a very tough decision to make. Do they wait and try to re-sign Jamal Williams a few days later, potentially missing out on the rest of the running back market? Or do they look to go out and sign an upgrade at running back and potentially lose out on one of their team captains and team leaders? Well, Brad Holmes was put in that exact position and decided to go with the latter, signing David Montgomery to a three-year, $18 million contract, while Jamal Williams signed a three-year, $12 million deal with the New Orleans Saints. Now, there's been a lot of back and forth talk on what the right decision was, what the right decision should have been, and what Brad Holmes should have done. But at the end of the day, the decision is made. At the end of the day, there is no going back, and David Montgomery is the starting running back for the Detroit Lions. And today I wanted to compare the two players. I wanted to take a look at what both players do well, what both players have as strengths and weaknesses, and who actually got the better deal of the two. So with that being said, today we're going to compare David Montgomery to Jamal Williams, talk about their strengths, weaknesses, what they bring to the team, and overall who got the better deal. So with that being said, let's get right into it. Taking a look at the base salaries. Now, as I mentioned, David Montgomery signed a three-year, $18 million contract with the Lions, averaging about $6 million a deal, which is a little bit pricey for a running back, but it by no means is some absurd number you can't work around. Meanwhile, one day later, Joel Williams signed a three-year, $12 million deal with the New Orleans Saints to be likely their running back too. Now, from a contract perspective, and especially for a player that just set a franchise record for rushing touchdowns in a season, you would think that Jamal Williams has the upper hands here, but it's not all about price tags in years. It's about what players bring to your team. Both players are going to be in their new situations for the same amount of time and roughly for the same amount of money. $2 million might seem like a lot, but in the NFL, it really isn't a whole lot of money. And for a player like David Montgomery, you could potentially see why you might want to pay a little bit more. Now, in six career seasons for Jamal Williams, he has totaled 1,075 touches, 4,843 yards, and 38 touchdowns. Last year, by far, was his best year, having 1,000 rushing yards on the ground and a franchise record 17 total touchdowns. As I said, 2022 was his first time ever getting over 1,000 scrimmage yards in a season, although he has been in the six to 800 yard range just about every year of his career. David Montgomery, on the other hand, has played four NFL seasons, has 1,070 touches, 4,849 yards, and 30 touchdowns, while having four straight seasons of over 1,000 total scrimmage yards behind a really poor Bears offensive line that did not run black for him, but we'll get to that in a minute. David Montgomery has more receiving upside, has more rushing upside, and has been more productive throughout his career, accomplishing almost exactly what Jamal Williams has done in six years, but doing it in the span of four. They are five touches apart in their career, six yards apart, and eight touchdowns. And without the career year behind the Lions' top five offensive line in a franchise record setting 17 touchdowns, Jamal Williams would be failing to meet David Montgomery in every single statistical category except for years played as he has two more. And moving on to the offensive line situation because that is important when grading a running back. Now, when taking a look at last season, Jamal Williams averaged, averaged 2.4 yards per carry before contact last year, meaning every single time he touched the ball, he was averaging getting about two and a half yards in front of the line of scrimmage before ever being touched by a defender. David Montgomery, on the other hand, behind the Bears offensive line, had just two yards per carry before contact. Now, a half a yard might seem really small in the grand scheme of things, but when you're talking about 200 to 250 carries a season, that is over 100 yards of extra production 
before contact and likely several more big plays and several more big touchdowns. So Jamal Williams, despite rushing for more yards last year, also didn't have to do quite as much work as he had more as he had more production from the offensive line in front of him, and the old line for the Lions was a nasty unit a year ago. While David Montgomery really struggled behind a Bears offensive line that couldn't pass protect and for the most part really couldn't run protect either. Now, looking at what they can do after contact, because that is something that Ben Johnson noted, that he wanted his running backs to be better after contact. He wanted them to play better after what was schemed up for them, because while Jamal Williams averaged 2.4 yards per carry before contact, he only averaged about four yards a carry on the season, meaning he had less than two yards after contact, while DeAndre Swift had quite a few more. But David Montgomery is at that two yards after contact number, which again, might not seem like a lot, but when you're talking about a third of a yard over 200 to 250 carries, that is quite a significant difference between rushing yards and lost rushing yards, right? That is a pretty big, almost 100 yard difference in yards gained versus yards lost, and David Montgomery wins those yards. He gets those big plays. He breaks those tackles. He had more broken tackles last season than Jamal Williams by, I believe, seven and did so while playing behind a really, really poor offensive line. And even while doing so and splitting carries with Khalil Herbert and, of course, splitting carries with Justin Fields, he still rushed for over 800 yards and still had over 1,000 scrimmage yards on the year while putting up, I believe, a career-high touchdowns with 10 a season ago. By no means was David Montgomery a bad back. He was just stuck on a bad offense that couldn't really help him achieve his successes. So Jamal Williams was in a better situation while putting up worse yards after contact and creating less than David Montgomery was doing on a bottom five offense in the NFL. So switch the positions. Now David Montgomery is getting two and a half yards of carry before contact while averaging two yards of carry after contact. That's four and a half yards a carry on the season, which would put him at a really good spot among other NFL running backs. On top of that, after yards have been created for him, David Montgomery is extremely good at forcing missed tackles and has a little bit of a tick more speed than what Jamal Williams has. Now, I think the set that speaks mostly to that is the fact that since entering the NFL in 2019, David Montgomery has forced 185 missed tackles being the fifth most in the NFL over that time span, meaning he makes people miss more than just about every single NFL running back. And when you look at the tape, it's pretty evident as to why. He has really good body control, really sharp cuts, and just an extremely strong style of running. Now, he's not going to be Saquon Barkley and break off 50 or 60 yard touchdown runs. He's not gonna be Tyreek Hill and burn people to the edge and then take it all the way to the house. He is a methodical runner. He is more of a tank. He is more of a inside the tackles, take the punishment kind of running back. And although he does have some decent speed, he can get some chunk plays, he's never really gonna go for a 70 plus yard touchdown, right? He's not, doesn't have the speed for that to happen, but what he does have is quickness. What he does have is elusiveness and the ability to break tackles, which is something Jamal Williams really didn't have. Yes, he was powerful. Yes, he would run through people. And every once in a while, he would break a tackle or make somebody miss. But he really wasn't very elusive. And he really wasn't very fast. He had some decent feet, but really, again, didn't stand out in that category either, which are all things that David Montgomery thrives at. Now, where did Jamal Williams have the advantage? You're talking about rushing touchdowns. You're talking about a power back. And David Montgomery, despite being lighter on his feet, despite being more of an elusive back than a power back, certainly has some power to break tackles. And even if he's not running through people as far as putting them on the ground, he's running through people at a higher rate than Jamal Williams as far as breaking tackles or getting around them. So it might not be the case of, yeah, we're gonna run and push the pile forward with our huge running back, but David Montgomery can certainly do that for the Detroit Lions offense, maybe not at the highest efficiency rate of a guy like Jamal Williams, but certainly at an efficient enough rate to keep the offense in the top five but he adds quickness, he adds more in between the 20s, he adds more as a wide receiver, has more receiving production, has more career production, and overall is a significantly better player than what Jamal Williams was bringing to the Detroit Lions a season ago. Now, with that being said, I don't think either team really lost here. I think that Jamal Williams is going to go to a place where he can continue to play that role behind Alvin Kamara of a goal lineback, of a touchdown machine, 
and somebody that is probably going to get 150 to 200 carries a season, somebody that could get to 800 or 1,000 yards on the season. And I think he will continue to find success in New Orleans, but the Lions got a better back. The Lions got a better receiving back. They got a better back between the 20s. And I don't think they're going to really lose out on a whole lot in the red zone as a rushing offense either. So for $2 million extra a year, the Lions get a significantly better running back in just about every single possible way. So with all that being said, that is all for you guys today. Let me know down in the comments below. What do you think about this whole situation? Do you think the Lions got an upgrade? Do you think the Lions missed out? Who do you think won this side of the free agency period? I'm very curious to you guys think. But with all that being said, that's all I got for you guys right now. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, and as always, go Lions.